Now we're going to look at an example of role-based user authentication, where a user can have many roles, and those roles provide different privileges that enable different operations to the Firestore database. Let's start by taking a look at our data model. First, we have a user's collection, and the only important field on the user document is the roles array. It's an array of strings, where each string represents a role that that user has, allowing them to create documents in other parts of the database. Now, one potential issue to be aware of here is that when you have a list of roles like this, you need to make sure that the user is not able to modify this value on their own. It wouldn't be very effective if a user could just assign whatever role they want. From there, we have another root collection called posts. A post is a document with four fields on it. It contains content, which is the content of the post, a published attribute that determines whether or not the post is visible, a created at timestamp, and a user ID to associate the author of the post to that document. Now let's go ahead and jump into our rules and I'll break down the logic that we want to enforce. As you can see here, we have a match block for the users collection and the post collection. And I'm just going to go through this line by line to break down the logic that we're enforcing. Now keep in mind, I'm using custom functions to describe what I'm doing. We'll implement those functions after we run through the logic. On the users collection, we first want to allow reads if the user is signed in. But when it comes to updates and deletes on the user document, we only want that operation to be allowed by an admin user. And to handle that, we're using a custom function has any role. It takes a list of different roles as its argument, and if the user has any of those roles, it will allow the operation. And you might also notice that we don't have a create operation for the user's profile. That's very common because a good way to create a user profile is with a Firebase Cloud function. That's beyond the scope of this course, but when you can do things on the back end like that, it can often simplify your rules. Because a cloud function is a secure backend environment, it doesn't need to go through the rules to allow an operation. If you tell a cloud function to create a document, it's going to do it no matter what rules you have defined here. Now back down to our post collection, we're allowing reads if a user is signed in and the resource data published value equals true. That means the post is published, the user signed in, so they should be able to read it publicly. However, we might also have an admin feature where the admin can read unpublished work, in which case we can use the or operator along with our has any role function to allow admin users to read any of the posts. Now, when it comes to creating a post, we'll first check to make sure that it has the valid data types and format, and then we'll ensure the user has an author role. For updates, it'll follow a similar process, but we'll have slightly different validation logic. And then we'll also allow additional roles like editors and admins. And finally, deletes should only be performed by the admin user. At this point, we've defined our security logic with a bunch of unimplemented functions. Let's go down here and implement that code. First, we'll implement is signed in, which you've already seen throughout the course, simply checking if the auth resource UID does not equal null. But the most important function here is has any role which takes an array of strings as its argument, then determines if the user has at least one of the roles in that array. First, we make sure the user signed in, then we use the get function to point to the user's document, and we call data roles, then has any, and pass it our roles array. Now, whenever you build a feature like this, it's important to not only validate a role, but also the shape of the incoming data. And the shape of the data might be different for a new post versus an updated post. And that's the case in our implementation, so we'll go ahead and create two different functions. The first one is valid post. We'll set the post as a variable, then we'll make sure that it's owned by the user creating it. We'll validate the timestamp, and then we'll also validate that it has all the required fields. To do that, we look at the incoming resource, we get its keys, and then we use the has all method which will ensure that all the keys in this list are present on that document. And generally speaking, the logic you implement here will mirror the logic in your front-end application. It's best if you can prevent invalid data from ever hitting Firestore by validating it on the front-end first. Your rules are more of a safety net to prevent hacking or bad data validation in your front-end code. Now, the implementation for an updated post is slightly different. We set the post as a variable, and this time, we check the incoming keys and we only need to make sure that it has one or more of the contents that are allowed to be updated after creation. In our app, the user can only update the content, the timestamp, or the published attribute. And notice how we're using the has any method here. This will allow one or more of these fields, as opposed to has all in our previous function, which requires all four of those fields to be present. Now, just for fun, we'll also validate the post content. 
you can check a data type using the is keyword along with the data type you expect it to be. For example, post content is string. And then we'll also check the post content size to make sure that it's less than 5,000 characters. And at this point, we have a fairly decent starting point for role-based user authentication. There are all kinds of ways you might want to customize this logic, but that's basically the gist of it. The important thing to remember is to secure the user document that contains the actual role. Then from there, you can read that document safely in your rules logic to allow or deny operations based on what's inside the actual data there. Now that we have this example, we're going to jump into some JavaScript code to unit test our rules and audit them for production. 